Hi, welcome to Spectrum Protect version 8.1.6. In this demo, I'm going to show you how in the Operation Center you can create parent and sub rules for tiering data from a directory container out to the cloud containers. You now have the option to tier by age and the option to tier versions of data that are inactive. Let's take a look at how to create these rules. Go ahead and click Get Started, go into Storage, and click on Tiering Rules. In order to add a new rule, you'll want to click on the plus Create Rule, and this is going to create a new parent rule. Now you can have one parent rule per directory container, but a parent rule can also be effective for multiple directory containers. Choose the Spectrum Protect server. Next, choose the target cloud container pool you want the data to tier to. And now we're going to choose the directory containers we want to have these rules apply to. You want to give the parent rule a name, so we're going to call this parent rule storage pool 1. You can then choose if the data that's going to be tiered is all of the data or just the inactive data, or if the sub rules will be exclusively used to determine how data is tiered. Click on the Learn More button, and this document will help you determine if a parent rule will work for all your clients or if you need a sub rule to address your different client tiering needs. In addition, you can set the age threshold, which is how long the data remains in the Spectrum Protect directory container before it's tiered out to the cloud. And this too can be either dictated by the parent rule or specified by the sub rule. The sub rules that we're going to create are simply exceptions to the parent rule. You'll then want to choose the daily start time, and this should be after all of your backups and replications have occurred. And finally, you'll want to either set a maximum runtime for these tiering processes, or you can choose no limit. And this is incremental, so it will pick up from where it left off on the previous day if you do set a limit and it doesn't complete. The parent rule has been created, but it's not yet active. We'll leave it inactive until we create sub rules. Let's now go back into Storage, Tiering Rules, and you will see the new parent rule showing up there. In order to create sub rules, click on that rule and click plus Create Sub Rules. The first sub rule we're going to create is for individual backup archive clients, and it's going to be for inactive data that's been in the directory container storage pool for 30 days. So we'll give the sub rule a name. Remember, lots of different types of data can be stored in the directory container. And when we do, for instance, a progressive incremental backup, it's a different structure than, for instance, when you backup a full plus incremental database backup. So it's important you go out and look at this help page. It contains information about the different types of data that might be in the directory container, whether it's a regular incremental forever backup, a database backup, a space managed file. And for each of those, it tells whether that data is compatible with tiering by age and or tiering by state. So it's imperative you look at this before you set up the sub rules for each type of client and the data that they're protecting. For this backup archive client sub rule, we can either tier by age or tier by state. We're going to go ahead and tier by inactive data state. Remember, Spectrum Protect has your active versions, which are the ones that are the most recent version, and then all other versions are inactive. We are now going to go ahead and add in specific individual client names. These are all the clients for this specific Spectrum Protect server. So you can go through and you can select one or more, and you can even use the shift and control to highlight multiple nodes. Let's go ahead and click Create. And now that that sub rule has been created, when we go back to the original storage tiering rules, we will see a sub rule listed underneath the parent rule. Now let's go ahead and add in a sub rule for SQL backups, and we'll do that for individual SQL clients that have inactive versions that are at least 30 days old in the directory container. So we'll go ahead and give the sub rule a name. We'll choose inactive data, and we'll give it 30 days. We'll go ahead and add in the SQL clients individually. And up here, you'll see you can filter by name. So we're going to type in SQL, and that'll bring up all the node names with SQL in them. 
Here's a client that we did not mean to add in, so we can simply click on it and then hit delete client from that sub rule. Now that we're happy with the client list, we'll go ahead and create this sub rule. And now when we go back to the storage tiering page, you'll see that we have two sub rules listed under the parent rule. The next sub rule is going to be for a virtual machine backed up using Spectrum Protect for VE. We'll go ahead and give the rule a name. In this case, we will choose no data. We do not want to tier the backups from these particular virtual machines because they're important production machines. So we're going to search for LNX because that's part of our virtual machine name. These are the virtual machine backups we do not want to tier out to the cloud. Go ahead and click Create. And now underneath Storage and Tiering, we should have three rules showing up. Now let's create another rule for virtual machines. And in this case, we will use a name pattern. And we do want to tier these virtual machine backups out to cloud because in this case, they're going to be development test machines. And so we want to do all data tiered after one day of being on the directory container. You'll first want to choose the virtual environment that you want to select the virtual machines from. So we're going to match the virtual machine name. And in this case, we'll have dev test. When you're creating these sub rules, if any of the names conflict with other sub rules that have already been created, you will get an error showing you that conflict. Okay, and once we create this rule now under storage and tiering, we will have four sub rules. If you click on those four sub rules, you will get the listing of those individual sub rules. In order to make this parent rule and all the sub rules active, we'll click on the parent rule role properties and we'll slide the active button across and then we'll click on save. So now this rule and all the sub rules will run at the specified time every day. If we want to modify one of the rules, we can click on that sub rule and go to properties, then click on modify. And in this case, we want to add additional clients to that rule. So we're going to select those clients and then click Add Clients and Save. Okay, let's switch over to another operation center that already has some historical data in it. And so we're going to drill down on this specific tiering rule. And we're going to go into the Details panel. You'll see that it has multiple sub rules associated with it. And now if you click on one of the sub rules, you'll be able to see the status of that over the last two weeks. And so here, if you click on the recent history, you'll see the statistics about the data that was moved on those specific days. You can hover on the bar graph and that will show you the workload that was available to be tiered and the actual amount of data that was tiered. If you hover over the bottom status bar, it'll either be green showing a success or red showing a failure. And then you can hover over the speed information and see what the throughput was for this tiering process. Let's take a look at another storage rule. We'll drill down into the sub rules. And as you can see, in this case, there was some failures where all of the data did not tear out. And those show up on the left hand side, as well as you'll see the red icon below the daily information. And here you can see the amount of data that could have been tiered, actual amount of data that was moved. If you notice on the very right side, there is only a dark blue bar. The tiering has kicked off, but it has not yet finished. So we can actually go and take a look at these tiering processes. We'll go into servers and click on the specific server and drill down into active tasks. And here you can see the tiering tasks that are currently running. The objects in the source pools that are not members of a sub rule will be tiered based on the storage rule and the max processes of that parent storage rule. In this case, we are using sub rules and sub rules have a separate max process. If you want to set the parent max processes, use the update storage rule. If you want to update the max processes for sub rules, use the update sub rule command. Back in the storage tiering sub rules, 
Let's go ahead and show you how you would delete a subrule. Click on the subrule, then click modify, choose to delete the subrule, and at that point you'll get a warning and go ahead and click delete subrule again. So now you'll see that instead of four subrules, we have three subrules assigned to this parent rule. So in summary, you can now configure a storage environment to automatically move data from a directory container storage pool to a cloud container storage pool. You can create a tiering rule that specifies to tier the data out of a directory container storage pool, either by age or by state. And then you can also add subrules that are exceptions to that rule. And for those, depending on the type of data that those clients contain, either have them tier by age or tier by state. Thank you very much.